Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a time lapse of this sweet little gerbil illustration. And I asked my uh, friend on Facebook, who's also a local preschool teacher, if I could paint from one of her photos. And it was so cute. And that's what we're going to do today. If you would like a real time version of this lesson, you can find it up now in Critique Club. Critique Club is $5 a month. It gives you access to um, over 80 real time, a little more advanced than I post on YouTube art tutorials. You also get a monthly prompt and you can upload your artwork for feedback for me. So um, it's a great group there, $5 a month if you want to check it out. Um, I'll have the link in the video description. I'm starting off sketching with a, um, a terracotta, which is kind of like a brownish red call erase pencil and that's an erasable colored pencil so you don't have to worry about making a mistake because you can just erase it. I really enjoy these pencils whenever I'm using watercolor or alcohol marker because um, when I add watercolor on top of them they don't dissolve. Um, you could use watercolor pencil if you wanted it to dissolve. You could also use graphite but the thing about the colored lead in the erasable colored pencils is that it just kind of blends in. And, uh, and you don't really see the lines when your painting is done. It just kind of becomes part of the painting where you may see the graphite lines if you used a pencil. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you like to look at the graphite lines, go ahead, use graphite. I do a lot of the times, but um, it's just a nice option if you're looking for something different. I wasn't really sure what kind of animal this was. I knew it was some sort of rodent, but um, I wasn't sure until after I was done the uh, the sketch, I asked the teacher what the um, what kind of animal was it, if it was a hamster or a mouse or a gerbil, and she said it's a gerbil. It has a little nubbin tail you can hardly see from the illustration and the photo, but, um, but it is there. So in case you were wondering, it's a gerbil. I was thinking, is it a hamster? I don't know. It doesn't have that long wispy mouse tail though, that's for sure. I love his cute little paws that were on the top of the mouse house there. So I really wanted to get those drawn in and um, I was pretty happy with how the sketch came together and it came together pretty well. Uh, what I try to do when I'm drawing is find ways to measure the different parts up. So I'll see, okay, how far is the hand from the face, what sort of shape is made between the hands, what sort of shape is made between the feet. And I'll use those kind of uh, landmarks to help me place everything and keep things in proportion. So looking at the negative space or the space around your subject is a wonderful way to uh, keep your drawing a little more accurate. Um, and I'm working on hot press watercolor paper, which is not something I do that often. Uh, I did find that it seemed like my paper dried a lot quicker and um, it's a little bit harder to lift on. So something to keep in mind. Now, I wasn't too worried about that because I fully intended from the start that I would use some colored pencils for accents at the end. So there's really nothing I have to worry about preserving um, or even worrying about hard edges or not. Now, the, pa the paint that I'm using, oh my word, it's I think it's one of my new favorites. It's uh, and I have a review coming up in a week or two on these. Um, but it's the Shin Han PWC watercolors. I used their quote unquote professional watercolors a few years ago, and I thought they were pretty good. They were very inexpensively priced, but they weren't the top of the line that Shin Han has to offer. Uh, their PWC or SWC, which is their Korean marketed brand, are their extra fine watercolors. And um, I saw the price drop on the set of thirty two, and I just couldn't resist. I've been looking at them for years, and I finally just decided to bite the bullet and grab them. And I like them so much. I've done so many little paintings with them and they just handle so well that when I saw the pastel set um, show up on Amazon for $32, I think I paid $35 with tax. Um, I, I snagged it right up because I was enjoying the regular colors so much. And they were just perfect for this wood chip, not wood chip, uh, it's kind of like, like a shredded paper or something. Um, liner uh like filler that you would put in the bottom of a mouse or a hamster cage to keep it clean um so i'm using that for that background and uh oh they're just so fun they're just so fun to work with now the pastels are not going to be as useful as their standard colors but um i just like the standard ones so much and by this stage of the game i've tried everything and uh i thought those were kind of neat and unique and um and a lot of fun you can also find open stock tubes at blick.com so uh if you want to check out blick artist materials i don't know if they sell them in store but they do have them online and they have a pretty good price they range from from like if you're buying a single tube between I think five and eleven dollars uh it's much cheaper than other companies 15 ml tubes um but in the sets it's much cheaper to get a set if you're relatively sure you're going to use most of the colors and I'm actually pretty happy with most of the colors in this set but you'll have to watch the full review for my complete um thoughts on this 
product. Um, I finished filming the review. I don't have it edited or uploaded yet. So it's probably going to be a week or two, but uh, spoiler alert, I really like those paints. Um, and I was having a lot of fun mixing the pastel tones in with the traditional tones because this is really, I, and what I, this actually came out pretty much what I envisioned in my mind, a very illustrative, almost storybook looking piece. So, um, and when I'm, when I'm illustrating something, I will use everything. I'll use markers. I'll use gouache. I'll use watercolors. I'll use fine liners. I'll use colored pencils. I'll use what I, um, what I want to get the look I'm after. And, uh, so I was, I had no like sacred cows here. There was no, like, I'm not going to use white. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use that. Everything was fair game. And, uh, I think it's, it's fun to approach a painting like that. It kind of takes a lot of the pressure off because there's always a media that can do what you need it to do. And, um, and it was just a lot of fun. It was fun. This is a controlled wash I'm demonstrating here with the, uh, with that red watercolor. Um, so I basically started off with this painting blocking everything in. And the nice thing about using a pastel watercolor on hot press paper, your paint doesn't travel that much. So I could, I, I did dry things before I went on to the hamster, but, uh, or the gerbil, but honestly, I could do the background, then do the little mouse house, really not have to worry too much about, um, about things bleeding together or going uncontrollably because for one, when you have a paint with body to it, that's got like a white in it, like the pastel tones, and you're even mixing in with that, you're going to notice your paint is not going to flow as much. It's going to be heavier and sit where you put it. And I just is, uh, when, for doing these base layers for an illustration, it really, um, it really speeds it along and it's just really easy to control. And then you can go and refine with more layers of watercolor or uh, layers of gouache or a colored pencil later. So it just gives you a nice, um, kind of a nice starting point. So here I'm going in with my transparent colors and I'm putting in the dark patches of fur. Sorry, my hand's in a way there, but the way I'm holding my brush is perpendicular to the paper. And for me, that gives me the best control when I'm painting fur um, because I can press down when I need to fill an area with color and then I can lift up on my brush and just kind of flick it when I want to have individual furs. Now when you're looking at an animal and you're painting an animal, you're not going to paint every strand of fur or it's going to look really flat and unrealistic. So you want to have some little wisps of fur, but you want to have um you want to have some kind of uh, blocks of color as well, just to make it look a little more realistic. And you want to put more of your detail on the area that you want to be more in focus. So for me, that would be the face. That would be cute little eyes, cute little nose and whiskers, little fingers, you know, that's what I would want to enhance or draw attention to in this picture. So, um, you know, kind of, that's why my hand is in the way when I'm doing that technique is because I'm using it, using the brush straight up and down. Um, but there you can see, you can, you can easily see what I'm doing there. Um, and in the ears, I was seeing this kind of like um, almost reddish, uh, brownish, peachy color. And so I mixed those colors to get that. And my camera was struggling a bit there because um, uh, I wanted to focus on my face or my hand as I was leaning in. I do like to uh, kind of look directly down onto my picture whenever I can. Um, I'm kind of usually looking at an angle when I'm filming, but I do like to look straight down on it or tip it up. So I'm looking at it a little bit more square on, especially when you have things like, um, uh, like three dimensional objects, like, um, like that mouse house there to get the siding, to get the, the little mouse hole, to get all those things. So they don't look terribly awkward. It just helps. It can help to put your painting up on an easel and step back from it too. It can help, um, if you just almost give your eyes a break and come back to it later, if you're feeling stuck or frustrated, I'm putting another layer on the roof because it was a little streaky and I wanted uh, just a little bit darker. And I'm just trying to, uh, I didn't do a controlled wash here, but I am just trying to do a quick wash where um, I just kind of work out from the wet edge so I don't get too much uh, streakiness. But if you do, you can just go over it while it's still wet and, um, and you can eat, honestly just keep layering until you get the the smoothness that you want. But I didn't want to I didn't want to spend too much time on the roof. That's not the uh, the point of this picture. And I'm going in and putting in the grooves of the uh, of the roof there, the little grooves of the tile, and trying to give a little dimension there. And I wasn't too thrilled with um, with how that was coming out, but I also again I didn't want to spend a ton of time on it. And the brushes I'm using throughout this painting are my new signature brushes through Craft Ammo. I'll link them down below if you're interested in them. Um, 
I think there's still some available. So a uh, beautiful set of brushes that I designed for use with watercolor and of course gouache. But I would thin down your gouache if you're using these brushes because um, especially the the cat's tongue and the large round, they're, they're faux squirrels. So they're a very soft and absorbent brush. Uh, the others are Taclon, so they would have no problem with full viscosity gouache if you were um, if you were using that. So, um, it's a great set of brushes if I do say so myself, if I do toot my own horn. <laughs> I'm putting on another layer on the mouse house on the shadow side and something I've been doing while I'm painting that wood, it's kind of looks like a chipboard. So I've been, um, purposely just kind of tapping my brush down, just kind of on its side. So I build up a little of that, um, you know, recycled cardboardy chipboardy texture and yeah, I'm just kind of adding up where I need it, adding a little more color and a little more uh, thickness to the little shavings that are in the foreground and I'm um, adding a little shadow on the house just to kind of show where it's a little bit darker uh, down towards the bottom in the shadings, in the shavings. Um, I'm darkening the hole in the mouse house so you can see that there's a little bit of depth there and that you could actually go inside that hollow building. And I'm also adding a little bit more of a shadow onto the uh, grooves in the roof there. So I, this felt like a long time. I felt like I was painting for a long time when I was working on this. I don't think it was honestly all that long, maybe like, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking it might've been like an hour and a half or so. Um, I was kind of, um, I was kind of struggling to, to get in the groove with this picture. Um, I've had a lot of my mind lately and I think it was just kind of hard to, uh, to just, uh, I don't know, to focus, but, um, but I was pretty happy with how it all came out. I decided to stop the painting at this portion and move over to pencils because I didn't think adding more layers of paint was really going to um, finish up the painting. And I figured if I do add more layers of paint, I'm just going to cover it up with colored pencils anyway, because I just, that was the way I want to finish the picture. So I just jumped right in and I haven't used my Prismacolors in a while. So I thought I would use those. They're very soft and opaque. And I just knew they would lay down very well over these layers of watercolor on a smooth paper. Um, and uh, and it did and it did I sharpened the pencils before I began I did have to sharpen a few colors because um, if you've ever used Prismacolors before you know they do wear down a lot quicker than other pencils because they are so soft but the opacity that they have is also really nice because you can finish things pretty quickly so uh, other pencils that behave very similarly would be um, the Derwent Chromaflow, the Derwent Color Soft, they're a little bit firmer. The um, actually the new Artix pencils, those budget pencils perform very much like Prismacolor. They're not quite as opaque, but they are they're pretty close to Prismacolor. Um, the Brute Fruiter Square pencils would also be fairly similar, and uh, they're very affordably priced. So there's definitely something in your budget if you are looking for a pencil that will give you that opacity. Now that said, I would highly recommend you pick up um, a white Prismacolor pencil or um, that's and, and the Prismacolor white is the one I use the most I buy it by the box of 12 um, but that's going to enhance any pencil set you already have because it's so opaque I haven't the only one I found that's as opaque would be the Derwent Drawing Chinese white but that is a little bit harder of a pencil um, and it is a thicker lead and I feel like I'm kind of wasting it when I sharpen it up so I usually stick to my Prismacolors for highlights but um but that would work too if you're living in an area where you can't find the white Prismacolors. But a lot of times the whites that come with a set are just a little disappointing. They're just not um, opaque enough. And I used a really pale blue just to give some highlighting on the roof. I didn't want that to be bright white because I really wanted the whitest area to be like the whiskers, the highlights in the eye, and the highlights on the fur. I decided that I wanted that little platform he's standing on to be more red, so I'm glazing over with a layer of um, of poppy red. And I'm not being really fussy um since it lays down pretty well and i'm already going over a layer of paint i can be kind of sloppy with my color pencil layers just i just want to intensify that color um, and i don't mind a little texture some people want it like glass smooth and if you do then you could do little circles and really you know burnish that down um and that's that's great if you want to do that i wanted a little texture i didn't want it to be super like glassy because uh, then you have to deal with glare and things like that if you are working uh, on things to be reproduced 
Um, the Derwent Pro Color pencils are also really nice, but they are extremely hard, so you wouldn't be able to lay down as much opaque um, pigment as you would with a softer pencil. So just to kind of file that back in your mind if uh, if you've been looking for something like that. And I did feel like I needed a little extra oomph, so I'm going in with my Uniball Signo Broad Gel Pen. It's my favorite white pen to use, and I did that for the whiskers and the highlights on the eye, and I really liked how that turned out. And I was kind of toying with the idea of using some fine liner, so I've got a, uh, a Derwent uh, fine liner here, and I am, they're called Line Makers, and I'm going in and just kind of going around the eye, outlining that. Um, and then I found my brown pit pen, which actually was toast. I could barely do any lines, but I wanted to outline the foot a little bit with that. And then I ended up um, pitching that in the trash because I've refilled it a few times and it was just not holding the ink anymore. Um, and signed it, and that was all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Check it out in Critique Club if you want a real-time version. I'll link that down below. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.